नमस्कार कोलकाता अमरा आशी तोमा दर शोहरे वेल दैट्स द स्मैकिंग ऑफ बंगाली आई हैव लर्न्ड इन द लास्ट 24 आर्स व्हेन आई हैव बीन इन कोलकाता ट्राइंग टू टेल पीपल दैट थ्रू आउट दिस वीक वी आर गोइंग टू बी इन कोलकाता and uh, get you the best and brightest of kolkata we will try and get you the art and literature we go to try and get you the big economists uh, from the indian statistical institute uh, uh, remember kolkata has produced everyone from amartya sen to pc pc mahalanobis and a whole host of uh, uh, you know the pranob sen choudhrys uh, any economist you name it's likely that uh, uh, it's uh, 75% chances are he is going to be a bengali so we are trying to get you the bright and uh, uh, best from the city as well of course the string of big corporates that are headquartered in this city which once was the premier industrial capital of india up until independence and then somewhere lost its way we went to track all that but of course sir, for this morning we are going to track how the markets will do there was a strong finish from wall street uh, overnight uh, reasonably strong finish considering that we are getting getting into a very important week when the fomc decision uh, will be announced we also got some very strong macro economic cues from india itself so looks like we are in for a very packed monday as well as a very packed week ahead even if it's uh, truncated by one holiday well good morning to you anuj and sonia out there this city is so beautiful <laughs> Hi Lata good morning <laughs> yes this week it's going to be all about Kolkata for CNBC TV 18 but for the world it's going to be all about the fed this is arguably the most important FOMC policy of the year and you know this time it's like a toss of the coin it could it could go any way so i guess there's going to be perhaps a lot of volatility and as you said the day when the FOMC outcome comes through will be the day when our markets won't be trading on Thursday so uh, we will of course be reacting to it on Friday but uh, what about the local data the iip data was a breath of fresh air it was better than expected you know led by capital goods um what did you make of that data well i must say that uh, the indian markets have something to cheer uh, I, i accept that we are only going to be globally focused you are damn right when you said this is not any fed policy this is the fed policy if the rate hike indeed comes this will be the first rate hike in what 10 years uh, and it's coming after so much of delhi dallying it's the most important decision the world is watching so i'm not taking away from the importance of that event at all but what we got on uh, friday was some very strong cues it just went on to prove that the indian macros are very strong first of all we got a 4.4 a uh, number for the a uh, 4.2 number of industrial growth for july itself that against expectations of 3.6 so a 60 basis point better than expected industrial growth number for july and what is even better the june number got revised by another 60 basis points which merely goes to prove that the growth picture is definitely better than what most economists and uh, investors gave credit for the second bigger number that we got was the current account deficit now normally that's a lag number both iip and cad are lag numbers iip come came in for july the cad came in for june really i mean should we bother so much but uh, i'm picking out that number as important uh, not just because of the current account deficit coming in at 1.2% much lower than the 1.6% in the previous quarter what was important was uh, that the current account deficit is getting bridged and more than bridged only by the foreign direct investment until now we were bridging our current account deficit by foreign portfolio investment now we have a 10.2 billion dollar foreign direct investment and that's no laughing matter you know foreign portfolio investment can go like that we know that you know it's a it's a daily affair of money being pulled out by portfolio investors but direct investment is putting in a factory that doesn't go away in a jiffy even if you worry them with uh, you know idiotic decisions like we did with nestle they just come back foreign direct investment comes with a longer period and that has risen by 10.2 billion dollars and what is the current account deficit it is 6.2 billion so we have more than bridged with foreign direct investment that's a very very strong sign so i would reckon that Uh, a a long only investor watching india would say this is a very healthy body economy i mean like the body politic the body economy is absolutely healthy when growth comes this economy can absolutely sprint faster it can run a marathon this is not a 200 million uh, 200 uh, meters sprint economy this is a marathon economy because the macros are so healthy i think those two numbers will be taken very positively by long only investors 
Fair enough. So the macro data is improving, going by the data that we got, you know, over the weekend. But what about uh, the CPI? Because over there as well, there's some relief that's expected this time around. Yeah, the CPI is going to be a damn good number. This is going to be the lowest number and that everyone in the market knows. This will come in at 3.4 and the Reserve Bank has been crowing for the longest time that it will be low because of the very big base effect we get in August of 2014. So we, we shouldn't take that 3.4 number as here to stay. It will rise in September and October and move towards 5.5% by January. What people will watch out for will be the food element. Uh, uh, there has definitely been some increases. Anecdotal evidence indicates that onions and uh, pulses and some food prices have gone up. So people will watch out that. That could be transient. Uh, if it's not too ugly, it can be managed with better supplies. We've got uh, information on Friday itself that the government is importing 5,000 tons more of tuar dal. So perhaps that will be managed with imports. Onion inflation has not become a general vegetable inflation. Vegetable inflation has not become a general food inflation and the generalized CPI inflation, all that is still in the control. So we will be able to take the, uh, you know, heart attacks in food inflation. We are also getting the WPI number at uh, 12 noon. Now, uh, that may give you some indication of the food inflation number that will come in CPI, but sometimes they can be a bit divergent like it was in the month of July. Uh, the more important number the market will look at will be what you call the core core. You take out food, you take out fuel, and then you take uh, a core element uh, uh, which is, you know, our medical services, educational services, that is only 26% or 25% of uh, the entire CPI basket. That has been rising at about 5.3, 5.5%. If there can be, if that can be maintained at 5.3 or thereabouts, then economists will be more happy. So we will have to look at what you call the miscellaneous number. But uh, those are other details. Fundamentally, you will look to see whether you can get that 3.4 number for uh, uh, CPI and whether you can, you know, even get a lower core, core CPI number, not just core, but the services number coming in uh, around that five, five and a quarter, 5.3 percent mark. If you're able to get that, then uh, it's not just an expectation of one cut on September 29. Hopes will open up for more cut, one more cut as well. So that number needs to be watched and all that can be very good fuel for the market. But uh, definitely uh, for the moment and for uh, the medium term, the Fed will call the tune. Uh, what's Anuj got to say about how the market is preparing for it, Anuj? Well, uh, Lata, uh, you know, first of all, uh, really nice background. I mean, uh, you know, I've been to Kolkata two or three times and uh, it, it, it looks like a, a beautiful background. But for the market, uh, Lata Sonia, you know, uh, there are two or three points. One is that this really is the most important week for global markets. Uh, and you know, you, you made a very valid point that we are not trading on Thursday. Mm. But anyway, we would have reacted on Friday because you know, the, the decision Maybe. will come on Thursday evening. Yes. But on Friday, we will likely to react to two days of bunched up global queues mm. because Thursday, the market will make a build up to the Fed policy and on Friday, of course, we will react to that. So uh, our build up would happen on Wednesday itself, yes. which is going to be extremely interesting. And volatile perhaps. And volatile. So I think this is a week in which traders should stay out of the Nifty. There will be temptation to trade the Nifty. But this week, like the uh, market did last week as well, the market is going to take out your stop losses on both directions. Uh, the market is going to make volatile moves. This is a week in which you should be trading stocks and you'll make money. If you have your stop losses in place, a lot of stocks will give you 10, 15, 20 percent moves uh, like we saw last week, at least especially building up to the uh, to, to the Fed event. Yeah. Now, you know, we also saw that on Friday, right, Anuj? It was almost as though people were just sitting on the fence ahead yes. of, you know, a big event, not knowing which direction it will go. Yeah, you know, it was so bipolar in nature, uh, Sonia. You had an empty quarter which was up 40 percent and you had so many stocks which were down 5 to 10 percent. You had a work hard which was up 10 percent. You had yeah. a couple of other stocks which went up all through last week. Well, there were so many stocks which went down as well. And I think this is going to be that kind of a week again. Uh, um, and the, the reason for that is cash market volumes have completely crunched. If you take a look at the FI volume or you look at the DI volume, both are down. FI has sold, DI has bought, but the uh, selling intensity and the buying intensity is down in both cases. I'm looking at the F&O data and one thing that stands out is really the index options data. And I'll explain that in simple terms. FIs have sold 1,200 crores of index options. And most of that is at the 8,000 call. We saw a big build up at 8,000 call. What's that telling you? That's telling you that the smart money is betting on 8,000 being top for this market, at least in this series. Regardless of what happens to Fed, this is a market which may not break 8,000 on the way up. At least that's what the smart money is betting on right now. The downside, that could be there because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, if the global markets react negatively to the Fed event, then, you know, you could have uh, repercussions in India as well. Yeah. Uh, 
just 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 one one more statistic we are at 7800 right now on the nifty logically 8000 call and 7600 put should have same premium but 8000 call is trading at 60 rupees while 7600 put is trading at 90 rupees so you're willing to pay 90 rupees to buy a 200 point out of the money put while you're only willing to pay 60 rupees to buy the 8000 call similarly if you were to extend it by 400 points suppose you're betting on a 400 point move on the market on the way up 8200 call premium is only 20 rupees while 7400 put premium is still 50 rupees so that's telling you if you map the greed and fear matrix in the market fear is still higher in the market than greed uh, which at times could be good news for the market especially if nothing goes wrong as far as the fed event is concerned but again this is an event which can really take out your capital if you get it wrong yeah. in terms of your market direction so and it is very hard to map this event because you know the fed is now in a paradoxical situation on one hand the fed's own mandate has been met because they had uh, set a barometer of higher labor and labor improvement that has been met so they should go ahead with the uh, fed, uh, rate hike but on the other hand the global world environment has slowed down considerably since the last yes, week yes and and you know the extension of that is that what what is more important what happens to the market once the fed decision is out yeah you know you you do get a you you do get a feeling that if the fed decides to hike rate in that case emerging markets will still see a bit of a sell off after that maybe the markets recover yeah. but if the fed doesn't hike in that case will you get a rally probably not because you know the the market will still have that uncertainty so mm. you know one thing is certain that the chances of the market seeing a bit of a downtick sharp downtick post the fed event at least on the day is slightly higher than yes. the market seeing an uptick yes. and that's what the options data is also reflecting right now but as I again said this is not a market in which you want to trade nifty but this is a market in which you want to trade individual stocks and there you go anuj look at that jokovic <laughs> wins the us open yeah. the singles how do you feel about that <laughs> i think uh, jokovic has now officially entered the the the, the doubles in, in a sense he has now won 10 grand slams uh, yeah. federer has 17 Nadal has 14, Sampras has 14 and now we have Djokovic at 10. And the way Djokovic is dominating right now, yeah. it's a matter of time. It looks like before you know he catches up to Nadal. Federer maybe is out of reach. Uh, 17 is just way too much and mm. maybe Federer would add another one before he retires, but yeah, 10 for Djokovic so catching up to Nadal now. All right. Well, uh, let's tell you what you'll get